Have your encounters been dull, been daydream, been just blah, and you want to spice them up, but you want mechanics, not creatures, to help with your encounters. Well, I've got five encounters that may help you have spicier encounters, but not that kind of spicy. Let's get in and talk about it. The arena is one of the most boring encounters in Dungeons & Dragons. It's a round circle that monsters come into. What about the shifting arena? What about every tile that has a random effect on it? Or how can you have an arena where randomness occurs? Tiles rise out of the ground, sink into the ground, pit traps open, new creatures come in. The shifting arena is one where two teams are pitted up against one another, but the arena itself shifts, introducing even monsters into the arena that may attack either party, as well as shifting openings of pit sands, trenches that appear, walls that rise. By doing this, you can actually have walls that rise that will split the party into two places, basically making them fight on two fronts. You'll have pits that go that makes, so your players can't get from one side to another that are 10, 15 feet long that makes you jump. It changes the dynamics. Or what if the ground rises below you and gives you a height advantage? There's lots of ways that you can use the shifting encounter, but the encounter is simple. You have two teams that are pitted against one another, and then the things of that arena change. There is so many things that you could do because it's a magical arena. Imagine if things fell from the sky or erupted below and magma flows opened up. You don't have to just shift with shifting terrain. You can be creative. How would you use the shifting arena? What obstacles would you put in there that aren't just opening and closing of traps and walls? What are your thoughts on it? Another encounter that I love, interesting and interesting mechanic is the elemental cores. Basically, you're fighting a boss. You're fighting a creature and in this cavern in this area, there are elemental cores that enhance the creature's ability, basically making it immune to some magics unless the core is destroyed. The question is, how do you find the cores? Do you telegraph the cores? Are they in a certain locations where that element has overtaken that area? The elemental cores is kind of a video game style mechanic where there are four cores, five cores, six cores that you decide because an element is whatever you decide as. Now, I like to stick with the cores of fire, earth, wind and water. Sometimes I like to throw lightning, light and dark in there as well. The thing is, is those cores can enhance that boss monster. Now there's two ways of doing this. One, when the boss monster enters the range of that core, it takes on the aspect of that core changing how it functions. If it moves into the shadow core, all of a sudden it casts darkness around it. If we find that core and break it, then it can move into the next core. So there are two ways. One, all cores affect the boss monster at one time, giving enhanced abilities. And as you kill those cores off, you're actually decreasing its abilities and you have to kill all the cores to do it. Or the boss monster can move between cores, enhancing its abilities. How would you use this? How would you telegraph? And what would you like to see the enhancements of that boss monster? And how important are destroying the cores to winning that fight? Answer those questions for me because I would love to know your thoughts on the elemental core challenge. But it adds an interesting mechanical aspect to the game. Another encounter which is very interesting mechanically is the mirror of duplication. The mirror of duplication is something where mirrors will show up throughout the fight or will walls will turn. Whatever stands in front of that mirror duplicates. So if the bad guy is standing in front of there, it duplicates himself. If a good guy stands in front of there, it duplicates himself. To destroy the duplicate, you have to destroy the mirror. And the mirrors are moving throughout this thing. When a mirror comes in within five feet of another thing, the original duplicate disappears, the new duplicate appears. Now, this mechanic is very difficult to track unless you can remember what all mirrors have. So what I like to do is basically have the labels of the mirrors, one, two, three, four, and five, and then have what they're duplicating as I move them across the thing. The best part about this is even though you are the good guy, you could go and step in front of that mirror of duplication to replace the bad guy's duplicate with your duplicate. So it adds an aspect of trying to overwhelm the opponents with action economy by utilizing the mirrors of duplication. Destroy the mirrors though, and you destroy the duplicate, as well as harming the individual that was duplicate, cutting their hit points in half. So there's a risk even to the players by having themselves duplicate because the bad guys can destroy the mirrors too. 
How would you use this? This one is different. I haven't seen it done a whole lot, but I would love to know how you would use the mirror of duplication. What kind of room would you put it in? Would you make the mirror stagnant? Would you put them on a wall? Would you put them rotating? Would you put them spinning in the rooms? How would you use these mirrors of duplication in your own game? I'm curious. You really want a fun encounter? Do the gravity well. The gravity well is a room. Now the room is going to have, of course it's a room, the room is going to have maybe a ceiling of 20 feet and different five foot tiles cause different gravity effects. When you enter that tile, you may start to float and so you have to swim through the air, cutting your speed to five foot per turn. But other gravity wells would cause you to flip upside down and go to the ceiling. Then you're on a different plane. These could be used. Imagine the bad guys knowing which squares would do what. Running into the room, hitting the right squares, flipping to the ceiling, getting behind the players. There's so many amazing things that you could do with this, but the bottom line is having the bad guys know how to use the gravity wells and the good guys not knowing. Or if the good guys took a second to learn which squares did what, they could use them as well. I love this concept. And the thing is, is you could also have different levels of gravity depending on the square. Meaning not only can you have up, down, in between, you could have heavy gravity, which makes them encumbered, moving half the speed, disadvantage on attacks until they can get to a lighter gravity well. I love the aspect of this. Now the question is, do you telegraph to the players? How would you use this gravity well situation to not overwhelm and make the players feel helpless in doing it? So I, have never done this encounter before. I've never seen it done. It's literally in my notebook from 30 years of dungeon mastering. I want to know how you would implement the gravity well to not take away the agency of the players and make them feel like you're against them. Because if they get a couple of bad lucks, depending on those five foot squares, that could really hinder the party. How would you use this encounter? The gravity well scenario. The final encounter I want to talk about is the Fey Wild Time Warp. Now the Fey Wild Time Warp is an area where at every turn you roll the die. And that die determines how time is passing through each individual creature. So you decide where these things fall on that die. You make a table of it yourself. I like to split it pretty evenly. Zero through five, you move at half speed, meaning you cannot take bonus actions, reactions, and you move at half speed, but you still get to use your action. Regular time is five through 10, meaning that you work as normal. 10 through 15, yes, I know I'm overlapping. You get the general gist though. 10 through 15, we are gonna have basically one and a half times, meaning I move at double speed, I get an extra bonus or reaction, but I still only get one action. And then 15 through 20, I get double speed, double bonus reactions, double reactions, and double actions, effectively doubling my action economy. So every turn, you're rolling the dice. The scary part about this is that the bad guys do it also. So very quickly, a couple of good rolls on the bad guy's side could completely overwhelm the party. So how would you use this without ending in a TPK? And what would you do as far as making sure that we could have a action economy that doesn't overwhelm the players or really hinder the bad guys at the same time? I wouldn't be upset if you had to figure out a way to actually manipulate the time dilation as well. Maybe one character actually has a time dial and they can speed themselves up, but then they have to give up time as well. How would you use this and how could the players, what would you give to the players to let them know how to do this? Would you let it be an advantage or would you let the chaos reign? So guys, those are five encounters that will add mechanics to your game. Everything from the elemental cores, where the elemental cores affect your bad guys, to using the time warp, where time affects every individual player differently, all the way to duplicating mirrors, where mirrors duplicate basically the bad guy or the good guy that stands in front of them. But if the mirror is damaged, then I also take damage, half of my hit points, because it kills my duplicate. These are all different encounters. How would you use them? What do you like about them? What encounters would you like flushed out? I'll be happy to do that. Shoot me an encounter, you're like, hey, how would you do this? It'll give me great content and allow me to actually work on some specific mechanics as opposed to talking about generalities. On this channel, I really like to give you guys idea to encourage your creative thoughts. But if you ever want something specific, how mechanically do you do this? I can give a full video and a rundown, including maps, on how I would do those things. 
So guys, thank you as always. Like, subscribe, comment below, tell me what you like, didn't like, be part of the community and I will make content specifically for you. And I hope to get up to five to seven videos per week on Dungeons and Dragons content and now TTRPG comment. If you're playing F5.1 SRD and you've gotten away from Dungeons and Dragons as a company, I, I encourage you and I support you. But at the same time, it's a great role playing system and lots of us have lots of material and there's lots of third party creators out there. So let's get real with it and we'll see you next time.